what is going on guys it's your boy Cecil here today bring you guys in a video uh bring you guys a cool photoshop slash illustrator tutorial here today so it's a cool little effect here we're gonna call the particle wave effect it's actually super 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 easy and if you guys remember i had like a cool little brush stock that was kind of like this and if you guys are probably wondering how you do it i figured out let's just figure it out ourselves and we figured it out and it's actually super super cool super easy to do as well and the reason why we're using illustrator is because illustrator gives us the cool blend options that allow us to do the things like this and then of course we're gonna throw it into photoshop to give a nice little cooler effect so of course i got a new chair by the way you might want to add that in uh so yeah so it's a really cool thing so i have this cool reddish kind of pinkish concept going on here with a sort of bluish greenish concept two different entirely different things but we just put some new colors on them and it's actually really really cool it's kind of like a plexus in a way um so if i just kind of zoom in a little bit you've been able to see it's kind of just basically little dots and it's actually super super cool i'm not gonna lie to you whatsoever we're just gonna throw it into illustrator first and then of course then put it into photoshop and get these really cool effects so I'm going to go ahead and say, of course, turn likes on the video because it's secret down below. As always, guys, I guess I'll leave the PSD of this maybe with like, I don't know, two other like backings or I don't know really. But if you guys want this, you guys can have it. And otherwise, uh, don't forget to leave a like on the video. Besides that, I guess we're going to get this thing going. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just jump into Illustrator and uh, call it a day. Let's do it. All right, guys, we're going to jump into the Illustrator program right here and get this thing going here. So all you have to do is set up two things really quick, which is a black background because you want to be able to see what's going to be going on in today's video here. So you want to make a black background. The way you're going to do that is I'm gonna hide mine really quickly you simply just make a new layer right and you press M on your keyboard or you want to go to the rectangle tool just like so click on the top left corner of the actual page and then just drag this all the way down the bottom right corner as you can see this little green arrow here kind of indicating where the square is right so you let it go you want to go over here where it says stroke and fill you want to turn your stroke off which is the last box right here and we'll turn your fill on which is the first box and when I click on the actual color palette itself and you want to go to your color picker and let's just make someone really mad right here and put this on black press ok hide the layer and what's not hide the layer excuse me lock the layer that way if you click on the page anywhere on the page it's not going to mess up or anything like that so you're pretty much good to go on that part right there <clears throat> but i already have my black background with my at on if you guys want to follow me right there's that we're going to have to set up the actual fill in the show one more time so we're going to have to turn our fill off this time right simply just click on that little box like i said before the last box turn our stroke on which is the first box and we're going to change our stroke color to a nice color we can see over the white, of course. Or you want to change the color to the blue or a green like I saw in the beginning of the video. I had the blue and a green kind of like path. If you guys want to change that right now, but I'm going to choose a default color and then choose my colors later on, which is a probably pretty good idea, honestly. So you choose white, press OK, and then you're pretty much good to go. So I'm going to make a new layer. I already have a new layer, excuse me. I named it effect because we're going to make an effect on this layer here. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the pencil tool because we use the pencil tool for this actual little drawing. We're going to be doing our sort of like script with a pencil tool which happens to be and your keyboard for the shortcut right below the brush is right in here under the uh, group of the shaper tool you'll see the pencil tool and what you're gonna basically do is gonna double click on the actual pencil tool icon just like so which will bring up the pencil tool options once you have this you change your fidelity I think that's how you say it. I'm not an English person I don't know anyway you want to change that to smooth right and when I change your choose pass when uh, the ended within change that to 15 pixels I believe that is the fault actually and you want to change your width to about six pixels and you want to press OK. So once you have that, you're pretty much all set for your pencil tool. And what we're going to end up doing is just making some random scribbles here. We're going to call them like S scribbles. Maybe like kind of like think of an S curve while you're doing this. Who the heck knows? But just kind of like have fun with it. Be dramatic with it. You might actually add, end up having to do something again over again because you might have you might not have like exactly maybe like these really cool little things like this, right? You might not have areas that kind of like highlight because you put more like kind of between and kind of the paths intersect in a really cool way if you don't have something that looks like that just try it again i might not even have it myself off this go right here but we'll we'll see what the heck happens let's just do one like kind of going like through like this like a lot of like a lot of turns going on here like that right i'm gonna just drag this put this in the middle right for some ocd right so what you're gonna do actually right here is you want to turn off excuse me let's go zoom in really quickly so you can see it's just a very simple white stroke going on right now right so i'm gonna go to windows i'm gonna go to stroke right here and we're going to go to our cap and our corner and change these both. By the way, if you don't see all these options right here, if you go to your top right, it should say show options. Simply just click on that. It'll bring all these options that I have currently. And you want to change your cap and your corner both to rounded. So what you're going to basically do is you want to change your cap, put on the middle one, which is a round cap. Put your corner in the middle one, which is the round join. And you want to change your dashed line option that's off currently by default to on. So what's going to happen here, it's going to not, it's going to do at nothing yet, but you see a dash and a gap both at zero. You want to change your dash, excuse me, leave your dash as zero. And you want to change your gap to about seven points. 
<laughs> and you're gonna see automatically there's this really cool little simple circles that are happening right here it's kind of like the effect the premise the foreground the build ground of the whole particle sort of plexus kind of deal with what's going on here so at this very moment in time you can just leave this as so make sure everything is still selected if it's not simply just click on the top right over here and make sure it's all selected still by the way you might want to probably want to do that before but you, you probably understood that in the, in the beginning make sure that all these are selected and always have these all these options here so if you zoom in on all these little things you'll see little dots here that's the way you want to go so once you have that selected again you want to go to object blend make right right now it's just simply just going to make an, a little sort of like a kind of connection between Let's just think about distance, right? And they're going to kind of fill it all in. But it's not actually filled in yet until we go to in yen, in yet. And so we go to object again, go to blend again. And besides clicking the word make, we're going to click on the blend options here. Was that a voice crack? No, sure. I'm not even sure. But we want to change your spacing. Drop this down to specific steps, right? And we're going to change this from one and we're going to change it to about 30. Click on this preview right here, just like so. And you'll see what happens. Press OK. And it looks pretty freaking cool. So right now I did get some really cool little overlays. What kind of gets looks a little more lighter in some areas. So right now I'm a very happy camper, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight this really quickly and show you guys exactly what some things you can do. So right now all these have the same options as one point with uh, height. Excuse me. And all these dash options are all the same currently. But you can actually just click on one just like so, and kind of pick on it and kind of figure out what weights you want to work with something like that. So if you want to go to your weight. Um, I want to go to about uh let's just say three and choose the three if you guys want to you can change your gap to about maybe like you can see what it does by the way it makes your uh, circle a little more thicker right so you're going to go to your gap you can change this about 15 or so press ok it'll make it look a little cooler right we'll change this one over here why the heck not to about maybe 0.5 i'll make it thinner no we won't we'll make it two this time for a second press enter and we'll change this gap to about maybe like 25 which is going to be super super separated 25 enter right there right oh lord please work there you go all right and it didn't change it because i didn't click on it all right 25 enter there we go now it's sort of like more thinner like that right so we're going to click on this one right here up top over here let's change it to about maybe like th what did i say like three or no 0.5 just like so and makes it super super thin so you can really mess around with this a lot and get a really cool like dimension and sort of i guess you would say spacing or depth or whatnot but once you kind of mess around with that and you kind of agree what you want to do, this is where you want to start choosing your color, right? So I'm going to click on this one right here. And we're going to use, excuse me, one path at a time. Click on this. I want to change this to blue. <laughs> and we're going to change this one to green. We're going to use blue and green again. Why the heck not? Right? Some two good colors going on there. Complementary colors. Let's go to blue here again. Let's change this one right here to green. And really, I'm just being really random about it. I'm just kind of make sure I get all the actual individual uh, splines from white to a different color like blue or green and if you want to be a rainbow or you make it rainbow who the heck cares who the heck knows what you can do about this but i'm trying to make sure i get this one right here i believe it is yep it's white so i want to change this one to green as well and i believe that might be all individual paths i might be wrong but as long as most of it is a color and you can see it looks really really cool so far we're basically going to drag this right into the sort of uh, Photoshop. And the way I'm going to do that is very simply just click on this top circle again, the target circle, <clears throat> right? You can just click on the anchor, move it right down, bring in Photoshop. And then so we press enter and I'm going to hide this really quickly. You'll see that it is right there, right in front of our faces, all good to go. So if you guys want to just drag it into Photoshop, that's how you pretty much get it all set. But I'm going to quickly just show you guys exactly what I'm going to do inside Photoshop to make it look a little more cooler. Like I had before set up as a really cool background or whatever you want to make it into a stock and whatnot uh if you guys and just in case you guys want to make it to a stock right really quickly all you would have to do is make sure you have a blank background and go to edit define brush preset press ok whatever you want to name it and then it's a brush there you go right that's going to make some of mine my, myself but that's what i'm going to be doing today's video i'm going to make it to a, like a cool little background so i'm gonna show you guys in a second on how to make it look a little more cooler inside of photoshop all right, guys, so we're in Photoshop. Very simple kind of stuff that's going to be going on right now at this very moment in time. So what you're basically going to do is going to make a duplicate of the first sort of uh, kind of like stock you guys put in here, right? So Control J is how you can actually make a really quick, simple duplicate, just like so. And if you guys want to, what I'm going to actually end up doing is I'm going to press E in my keyboard to bring up the eraser. If I select on this, I can just either rash the layer myself or just click on the actual thing itself on, excuse me, the actual document itself with the eraser, with this rasterized path, you press OK, it'll unrasher it itself just like so. And with this eraser, as you can see, this layer right here makes it a little more vibrant because it's kind of like an opacity kind of thing if you think about it. And I can also see that I did not make one of them green. It's white right there, but who the heck cares right now? What I'm going to do is I'm going to simply just take my eraser and just erase around 
areas like this, maybe like get a little bit in here as well. So you can see it's kind of like kind of like making a depth, right? So just kind of like erasing around some spots. If you guys want to, you don't have to use the eraser, just use that. You can use the actual, uh, how do you call the masking tool right here, and then use a black and white brush or eraser, which will either erase, excuse me, and it either erase something or either fill something back in if you guys want to do that as well. Uh, it doesn't really matter whatsoever. So what I'm going to end up doing is once you've done that first step, where it's kind of erasing and kind of like making a little bit of depth, you can do it multiple times if you guys want to, but right now I'm just going to do it one time. I'm going to group it together just like so. And what I'm going to end up doing is making another duplicate of this group right here. So control J to make a duplicate of the group and then control E to merge the group together actually. And then can, of course, again, we're going to get an opacity kind of thing going on here. But for this one right here, we're going to double click on this right here. And we're going to go ahead and go to Outer Glow. <clears throat> for me, you want to change your blend mode to screen. It should be on normal by default, but it's going to be on screen for me because I already had it on before. So change your blend mode to screen. Change your opacity to about 45, I would say. And then just choose a color over here. I'm going to choose a blue, of course, because it's going to be going well with my green. Or I can choose a green, honestly. I can choose a green and kind of goes well with green and the blue. Basically, we just want to make a nice complementary color. Either one of the two of the colors that you use in the outer glow or a different color that just kind of matches, of course, right? Make it look pretty, right? So we're going to go ahead and just use a blue, I think. I like how the blue looks. Press OK. 45. You can change your size about 50. Press OK. So if I zoom in here, you can see it looks has a nice little outer glow going on to it, right? Very simple. So second thing we're going to do is really, that's kind of like the whole entire part of the whole lighting kind of thing. You can do more things, maybe with like blurs and such, but I didn't actually do that in my actual presentation. But in blurs, you can, do, you can use blurs like Gaussian blur, motion blur, who the heck really knows. It's all up to you at this point, right in time. But I'm going to show you how, how I did like a little simple thing, right? So what I'm going to do now is use an adjustment layer called Vibrance, of course. So I'm on Vibrance, I'm just going to take my virus and just move it up to about maybe positive 45. Your saturation about positive 25. Press OK. So you have 45, 25, just like so, right? Now, at this moment in time, this is where you can either choose to do maybe something like a color uh, balance like that, right? Or you can choose maybe another like this, right? You can use a lighting effect. Let's just take a green from here. You can use a lighting effect. I like click over here, click over here change it to blend mode linear dodge add lower your opacity down and you can use a maybe a brightness and contrast and we're going to lower our brightness just like so up our contrast or maybe like put our brightness up a, a little more like negative 15 60 on the contrast if you want to make it look something like this might work for you um but for me right now i'm going to do is i'm going to really quickly just set up let's just set up what we have going on already let's go ahead and just take all this group this all together basically exactly what we did move this around a little bit give ourselves like a nice little background look to it what i can do as well is just impress Control j Control e to merge together right just like this kind of move it around make a background of it that can work why the heck not we're just going to try to do something really random just like how i did before but you don't have to do like this you can make a bigger one you can actually make the entire uh, actual rasterized first image bigger because of course the it's going to be in from illustrator so it's a vector right so it's going to be able to be expand as big as you really want it to be whatever canvas you might actually be inside photoshop it should fit in no matter what but i'm going to duplicate it because i think it looks pretty cool so once i've done that what i'm going to end up doing is using a color balance just like so color balance and i'm going to move this around a little bit and get this really cool little tone to it Let's get something like that. Oh, that looks pretty freaking too. Oh my god, looks dope. So you can get some really cool fit. Like that looks pretty freaking sick. All right, that's cool. So once you've done that, that's kind of like how I did my background. I'm not gonna finish it just yet. Control J on everything. Excuse me. Control E. Select everything. Right. Holding Shift. <laughs> Control J to duplicate things, and then Control E to merge everything together. I'm gonna use a quick little filter called a uh, Blur, Gaussian Blur. I want what motion will look like actually. Okay, uh, let's just go ahead and go from pixel distance. Let's just change this to like five or so, right? And I'm gonna use the simple little masking tool here. Use a brush, a black brush to erase really quick. Cause you can use some motion blur, erase around in some different spots, just like so. Just clicking around a little bit, get something like this. And I'll just say that this right here is kind of where I'm gonna stop at, and just say this is where I would kind of like maybe make the design here. I'm gonna change or group this all together. Put this right below here. And we're just going to call it Particle Wave, and we'll make this green, right? And that's sort of our little background there, right? There we go. So, 
thank you guys very much for watching today's video right here. So it's a very cool, very simple little thing to do. I can do this in literally like two minutes, but I of course extended the video so I can explain some of the things that I was doing. Um, so thank you guys very much for watching today's video. We're going to call it Particle Wave, right? So thank you guys very much again for watching the video. Of course, two likes on the video equals a secret down below, which will most likely be, I guess, if you guys want the PSD of the video, why the heck not? And uh, yeah, make sure you guys comment down anything you want me to see me do. Maybe it's like a new tutorial that you already saw and you're like, yo, it'd be pretty cool if we can do something like this. Why the heck not? Just let me know. Also, join my Discord guys join my discord it should be in the uh, in the description down below if it's not i'll put it in there but it should really it's always in there actually you guys should join the discord really cool community over a thousand three hundred people now so uh yeah thank you guys so very much for watching i'll talk to you guys later and i believe next week we're gonna be doing a font I, it's I, I, if you guys don't find me on snapchat maybe you should do that as well call me seso at snapchat that's what the snapchat is right and we're doing a font and it's gonna look really sick and we're getting to it i'm getting really close to finishing it should be done by next week and i'll talk to you guys I guess then <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Switch you out. Peace. Don't forget to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. And water. Because why not? Mm hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to go.